I had to share very briefly, friends, welcome to another Mercy Moment Emory episode, and I really wanted to, to just break down something that breaks the heart of God, something that is a travesty among church groups in America. And I'm trying to choose my words carefully because the church is a body of people, a body of believers, a collected, united, beautified gathering of people. Not a building, not an organization, but a living organism on the move, full of God, full of his presence. Housing his presence, as Bill Johnson has a devotional, housing God's presence, something along those lines. We are called to to be his hands and his feet as Jesus is the head of the body. As Paul painted a very vivid picture of what church is supposed to be. And the first century was whacked up, guys. The first century was a mess with the sexual morality, the the crazy pagan practices of that day make some of the things of today's culture look tame. Believe it or not, nothing's new under the sun. Depravity and fallen, broken humanity has been the same since the beginning of time. There's nothing new under the sun. And the reality is, without the head there is dysfunction and when there's no submission to the head Jesus there is great disarray and there's a lack of power and I've been a part of many gatherings of people seeking a move of God or seeking an experience and proclaiming to want to experience God experience his ways but in that confession there's something empty there's something missing there's a lack of a genuine life of hunger and seeking there's a half-hearted lukewarmness among many american gatherings and just recently i experienced a gathering where i just sensed in my spirit there was something that was not right and i've had this happen throughout my life When there's a leader that's not right, that's leading, it affects the whole congregation. Spiritual leadership is not something light or fluffy or something to be taken lightly. God does not entrust his bride to anyone, and his church is his bride. There's a high accountability for anyone that takes on spiritual leadership. I take very seriously when I communicate, I take a serious, sober perspective because I realize I'm accountable for what I say. Every empty word Jesus said will be, will be judged. And spiritual leaders, there's a higher level of accountability. There's a higher judgment. In the New Testament, it's pretty clear. And today, I feel like in America, there's just a bunch of guys running around with a title, but are missing the founding foundation of spiritual leadership, and that is intimacy with God. Not knowledge about him, not strong theology in the sense of, of, of just book knowledge, but a true, intimate, authentic relationship where you are shepherded and you're fathered by God. That seems to be empty and void in many places, and therefore you have a shallowness in those that they are leading. And that breaks my heart, and I just sat in a place in a gathering recently, and it just broke my heart because I saw a leader only God knows what's in his heart but in my spirit I sensed something was up there was a check in my spirit there was a discernment because I was in tune and there was the music just sounded like noise the songs and I just started seeking the Holy Spirit I said Holy Spirit what is here What's here? Because I'm not here to judge a brother. I'm not here to condemn a brother. But I am here to discern what's going on. And my heart was grieved, man. My heart was grieved because 
I saw a pursuit of an experience because the leader was distracted, disoriented, and I believe was dealing with some sin. And that's not to condemn someone, that's not to judge him, but spiritual man, he makes judgments about all things, but he himself is not judged. So this isn't a matter of me playing the judge to someone, I'm just, I'm, I'm seeing what's there and I'm saying, God, I need your help. And my heart breaks because if a leader's in sin, it leads to a powerless, powerless production. Because you have to fake it. If you're insane, you can't be in the darkness and be in the light. And this is something, if you're a pastor or a worship leader, someone listening that has a spiritual leadership role, I want to invite you to really get a square grip of the fear of God. One day we stand before him and everything's open and laid bare before the eyes of whom we must give an account, as the author of Hebrews says. And one day it'll be burned up. Every man's life will be tested as though through fire, Paul wrote to the church of Corinth. And he said if that what that man has built burns up, he will suffer loss, although he himself will be saved. Just eternal loss with what you did with your life. But if what that man has built, Paul said, if it remains, he will be rewarded. What's built out of gold, precious stones... Things that last. And those motives are revealed. No one's getting away with anything. And I believe the lacking foundation, why so many American professing Christians are unstable and their life is hypocritical and they're living double lives is because they haven't been founded in the foundation. To really know God, we must fear Him. Solomon and David both wrote, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You can't have a right knowledge of God without understanding Him rightly. That He is Father and He is Judge, as Peter laid out that dual role, as you read First Peter. He is to be exalted. He is to be feared. And that fear doesn't lead to a timidity. The fear, leads, fear of the Lord leads to life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. I'm quoting Solomon. Read the book of Proverbs. The fear of the Lord is what establishes a man. The fear of the Lord causes one to hate what is evil. The fear of the Lord is the foundation. And it's not just showing him a little respect. Don't diminish the word. The fear, fear of the Lord in the Hebrew is yare. Fear, dread, terror. Is an accurate translation, and it doesn't change in the New Testament. God remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. That word in in the New Testament, the Greek is phobo. When you, and most people have a wrong interpretation of phobo. Phobo is an awe and trembling. We're called to tremble at God's word. That's New Testament, friends. God has not changed. And he takes sin seriously, and it, it's time for the American leaders in the church to wake up. Because one day, you will fear him when you see him. It's simple. Don't mess with God and his people. Don't live a life of sin and still remain in a place of leadership. If you need help, step down. And get help. Confess your sins one to another. And pray for one another. You may be healed as the Apostle James told us. He who confesses his sin. When you confess your sin. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. And purify us from all unrighteousness. So it's a matter of changing my confession. You're not a sinner. That's a wrong confession. You're a son. You're a daughter. And it's time for the church to get reoriented, to really get through the identity crisis. And it starts with Jesus' finished work. Any other attempt will be totally vain and fruitless. It is finished, paid in full. One of my words for 2020 is finished. Living out of his finished work instead of striving 
to become something, rather living out of what he has finished, what he has provided through his work in faith. I love you guys, and I, I share these things because I long to see the church established, fortified, and founded. David wrote in the Psalms, Sing to the Lord with understanding. And if a leader is not relaying understanding, it's going to be an endeavor to energize and create an experience and an atmosphere and to have emotion but if it's not grounded, it won't result in transformation. All grace leads to transformation. The grace of God has appeared, as Titus wrote, appearing to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness, to live sensibly righteously in the present age, as we look forward to and hasten the coming of that day. Identity is key, friends. 1 John 3, 1, how great is the love the Father has lavished upon us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is it did not know Him. Everyone who has this hope in himself purifies himself just as he is pure. Here's a major revelation. If you're not pure in heart, you won't see God. If you're looking at porn and you're willfully sinning in any form, but I want to just bring to light, pornography is poison. And that addiction will 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 totally isolate you from the heart of the Father who is to restore, to give you the strength to overcome. It's an absolute lie that you can't overcome. What you confess, you are committed to. So if you confess you're a slave to sin, you will become one. But if you confess you're a slave to God, as Paul did in the book of Romans, slave of God, a slave of righteousness, you will live that way. Your confession is powerful. So I invite you tonight, Examine yourself, as Paul said, to see if you're in the faith. Examine yourself to see where you're really at because one day it's all over and it's time for accounting. We stand before the judgment seat of Christ and for those who have not placed their faith in him, it's the Bema seat of complete judgment with no mercy. So turn to the living God. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart, friend. Today is important. Today matters. And what you do, big and small, is compounding. You reap what you sow more than you sow, later than you sow. And the power of today is it's creating the results of tomorrow. If you don't like where you're at today, change your habits of today. Today is important. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart.